It's usually baked in a ceramic dish like this, which should be preheated while you are making the custard and preparing the fruit. So place this in the middle of a rack in a preheated 375 degree oven. And this is a 10 inch baking dish, which is approximately an inch and a half deep. So I'm gonna preheat this dish. And the fruit, I'm using nectarines today because they are so beautiful and so colorful. And I want to peel the nectarines. The easiest way to peel is to make a little X in the end of the nectarine. This will help loosen the skin. And the water should be simmering, almost boiling. And I just leave the fruits in the water until I see the skin starting to peel back. It's about 30 seconds or so, 30 to 40 seconds. It's a lot easier peeling peaches, apricots, nectarines this way than to peel it with a peeler. Look, you can see that already the skin is peeling away from that cut. And just put it on a parchment lined baking sheet, each of these nectarines. It was interesting to hear that nectarines and peaches are really extremely similar, almost the same fruit except for the skin. Thanks, Al, for that information. And now, to peel, just pull the skin away from the flesh. Look how easily it comes off. So if you struggle to peel fruit, this is the way to do it. The same with tomatoes. Tomatoes peel perfectly this way. And then, there's a natural line of demarcation on peaches and nectarines. And just cut along that line and see if you can loosen. Ah, oh, yes. This is called a free stone. See how the stone comes out freely? Cling stone is where the stone does not want to come out of the middle of the nectarine or the peach. And then just remove the pit. And for this particular clafouti, we're cutting the fruit lengthwise into quarter inch slices. And I'll prepare the batter. The batter is so easy. It's one cup, and use a blender jar, one cup of whole milk, one cup of the richest heavy cream you can find. Use a rubber scraper, because that really kind of stays in the cup. And a quarter of a cup of sugar, so it's not a very sweet custard. And two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. A quarter of a teaspoon of salt. And four whole eggs plus two egg yolks. Oh, look at that gorgeous egg. I have a new hen laying khaki eggs. And before you blend, add the seeds from one plump vanilla bean. And don't throw this away. Uh, put that in a sugar jar and flavor your sugar with some vanilla. And you can mix that for two minutes. So now we have our batter already made. Put it through a strainer because you never know an errant piece of eggshell, piece of vanilla bean. You want a really smooth custard. So you'll have almost three cups of batter. Now take your empty dish out of the oven. And be careful, it's very hot. And brush quickly while it's still hot uh, with about a tablespoon of melted butter. I like to do up the sides a little bit. This will allow you to release the wedges of clafouti after the clafouti has baked. And now pour just enough batter to coat the bottom of the dish. That's about right. This will give you a bottom crust, believe it or not. And I learned this little trick from Julia Child many, many years ago. One of her clafouti recipes has this little trick. So get this right back into the oven. Uh, and bake until golden brown, about five minutes. Five minutes is up. Making a little pre-crust in this dish ensures that your fruit will not sink all to the bottom of the clafouti. And now pour in the rest of your custard. If you see little black specks, 
that's the seeds of the vanilla bean. And now just scatter your nectarine slices all over the custard. I think I'll do three nectarines. They're not that big. And I have enough nectarines to make another clafouti right back into your oven for 35 minutes. It might take an extra three or four minutes. When it's done, bring it out of the oven and cool slightly. Now that is a beautiful clafouti. So simple, so excellent. Now dust, if you like, the top with a little confectioner's sugar. The sugar will stick mostly to the custard and not to the fruit. Everybody loves eating bread pudding. And I vary the bread pudding uh, in different ways by adding different kinds of fruit to it, dried fruit, uh, apricots, dried apricots are delicious. Today I'm using currants. I was making a lot of hot cross buns and I had some currants left over and I thought, ooh, currants and brioche. And this beautiful bread is homemade brioche that I made last week. Um, and I posted uh, the picture of it on the internet and everybody loved the brioche. But uh, so here's how to make bread pudding. Simple steps. Uh, you don't have to use brioche. You can use plain old white bread. You can use leftover bread. Uh, you can use whole wheat bread if you like. But I find that the most delicate, most beautiful bre uh, bread pudding is made from brioche. So take some butter. I have butter at room temperature in a bowl everywhere because I bake so much and it's so easy to spread if it is at room temperature. And butter, generously, but not, not overly generously, um, a large, about a two inch deep casserole. I love these French pili vit uh, baking dishes. I love the shape. I love the way they hold the food. I love the presentation. It looks pretty on any table. So uh, it is uh, a lovely, lovely casserole. Nicer than those uh, glass square lasagna dishes, for example, just for a dessert. It's kind of pretty. Now in a big bowl, now you're going to need a big bowl because we're going to have a little bit more than a cup and a half of milk, a cup and a half of heavy cream. Uh, break for this size loaf. I'm just eyeing it, but I think uh, five eggs. So break five fresh eggs and uh, discard the shells, of course, and don't get any shells in your, this is the custard base for the bread pudding. So that's three, four, and if your eggs are tiny, I have some uh, bantams laying small eggs. Now look at the size of this egg, it's so cute. Use two of those for one big one. And look at the color of those yolks. Delicious. Palm eggs. In this uh, hard time, it's really nice to have some eggs in your chicken house. Every day we're getting about uh, anywhere from 40 to 60, 65 eggs. And I'm very grateful because I can feed a lot of people with those eggs. And uh, now I need a whisk. Whisk your eggs up. Now I forgot to get vanilla. So I'm going to use my favorite other flavoring, which is brandy. I use that in my French toast, but I also like to use it in my bread puddings. So here, just add a couple of tablespoons. One, two. That should do. And a couple of pinches of salt. That's good. And then, oh, don't forget, this is a dessert, so you can add sugar. And I'm going to add approximately, I say to this, probably the brioche is already kind of sweet, so um, has sugar in it. So I'll add about a, three quarters of a cup of sugar. And I keep my flours and sugars in big glass jars like this in my kitchen. It's so handy to scoop in and up there on top of my cupboard I have lots more jars of stuff. So just add this in a stream to the eggs. This is already nice and thick so it's a, like a custard base basically. And you can also access these recipes at Martha Stewart 48 and at Martha Stewart on Instagram. And now add your milk. About a cup and a half of milk. Mm, so good. 
whole milk. And I happened to have some heavy cream that had to be used up. What better thing to use cream for than a bread pudding? And now, whisk that. And we're not done. We still have, I can put that in this dish because it can drip in there. Uh, I want some grated lemon rind. Use the great grater, this beautiful grater. It just takes the yellow, flavorful part of the rind off the citrus fruit or lemon. You could use a Meyer lemon, you could use a regular beautiful lemon. But boy, does that add a lot of flavor to your bread pudding. And remember I said you could use different kinds of dried fruits. Uh, last week I made a bread pudding using dried apricots and dried prunes. Really tasty. But today it's currants. See, it goes right into the bowl. Don't throw that away, that's your lemon. You can use that for your tea. And I've already started grating this orange, so I will finish and then I'm gonna use the juice of the orange in the custard also. And since I'm gonna squeeze this, take as much of this gorgeous skin off as possible. And then on the farm here, we don't throw those rinds away. They go down to the chickens. The chickens peck at these and eat all that leftover rind and pulp and oh, they have such a good time. And that's why their eggs are so yellow. Okay, now I'm going to cut this in half and uh, squeeze it right into. Make it easier to squeeze with one of these fabulous squeezers. Cut the bulbous ends off. Oh, what a gorgeous orange this is. Look at that. That will give lots of juice. And if you don't have one of these squeezers, again, um, Macy's Tool Wall, Martha Tool Wall at Macy's online or in the stores, which are now shuttered for the time being, um, you can uh, get all these fantastic tools. Use those muscles. I hope all of you are doing your exercises, doing your walking, keeping your mobility up because we don't know how long we're in for here. Uh, staying at home like this. No trainers, no gyms. So use your time well. And then I have currants that have been soaking in a little bit of cognac. Just add those. And I think that is the custard. Lovely. In your buttered dish, you can lay all your bread. I even use the ends of the bread because I know everybody's gonna love this brioche and it's so tasty. So I'm just layering it all in here. Use the ends on the bottom. And as you layer, then you can pour some of this custard in the dish. You want everything soaked. If you can hear birds in the background, I also have a cage full of breeding red canaries right now. Everybody's singing happy, it's springtime. There. And now let's spoon that over. My favorite ladle, Martha label. Oh boy, does this custard look amazing. This will be the most delicious, most atrociously creamy, soggy bread pudding you've ever tasted. Spread those currants around. Okay, so keep shingling. Maybe make the top layer as beautiful as you can. I cut the bread in slices and then the slices uh, in half. You can see how I cut that loaf. We're doing lots and lots of work here at the farm. And we have baby geese in the, in the basement. They hatched in the incubator here in my kitchen, but now there is a female goose down in the chicken yard and that goose is laying uh, an amazing number of eggs and sitting on them and she's so protective. Clean this up. 
and we pour the rest of the custard That is beautiful. Get the rest of the custard onto the pudding. I don't like to waste even one little current. Now that goes into a 350 degree preheated oven um, until, oh, say for about 30 minutes cover it with a piece of parchment paper and continue to cook it for until the custard is set. That'll take about probably around 50 minutes. And uh, let make sure that there's no runny custard left um, in, the, in the casserole. Um, and uh, you will enjoy it warm, you'll enjoy it room temperature, or you'll enjoy it cold, but you'll enjoy it. I'm going to show you how to make the banana bread before Please. I forget, because I, I could talk to Hugh Jackman all day, you know. One stick of butter, one cup of flour. Yep. Okay. okay. Yep. Oh, one cup of sugar. Right, but you need one of these, yes. right? Yeah, do you have one? I'm old school. Oh, no, you have to have one of these. Okay. Yeah, and then you can make this for the kids. Okay, Two right. large eggs. Yep. And you cream that, and then you can uh, sift the flour. Um, one and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of baking soda. Here, use that little whisk. Sure. Use that, use those muscles. Yep. Stir with a whisk. Oh. That's a whisk. Oh, I thought you meant sift. Yeah, I was sift. looking for the sifter. No, but you can sift with a whisk. Oh, can you? One oh. teaspoon of salt. See? Around and around to get all so well much mixed. With yes, see? You don't have to put it through a strainer. No, right. No. And so we can add that to here. I'll add that and you can add the other ingredients, okay? Done. Did I wish that have, well enough? We have prepared cake pans. Perfect. We need one Paper. teaspoon of vanilla there. Yep. Okay. And then I'll add the flour. You add banana, fresh I banana. I love it. Look at that. So, so, um, Just go for it. So you really like food and your family um, likes food. Yes. Both my parents are actually phenomenal chefs. Um, just amateur, but my, my mother in particular is gifted. My father loved cooking, but was very much a recipe guy. Sour cream. Done. Half a cup. Am I allowed to use the same? Of course. Oh, okay. It's all going into the yeah, same bread pan. Uh, and so he's I. It's very handy. Look, he's, he really is getting that all nicely out. I really grew up with nothing ordinary. In fact, everything we had really? three courses often, most really? meals at night. We always had a cooked That's meal. That's nice. Oh, 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 yeah, you can throw oh, those oh, in. Oh. I might. I, I don't like to beat nuts into anything because um, I'd rather finish this off by hand because I don't like to crush the nuts. Uh, yes, good thinking. Yes, right. You know, so here, we'll just take this off here. You can scrape this off for me. Oh, this one? Yeah, scrape it off with oh, a rubber scraper. Mm. I don't mean to lick that bit off. It tastes I? good. And because we're not using oil in this bread. You know, a lot of banana ah, breads have oil. Right, I presume you did. Yeah, right. No, no, we're using butter. Butter. Yeah, okay. I like butter better. You always use butter? Um, yeah, always. I, I, all these fast breads, I'd rather use... I don't know about Thomas Keller, but he might agree with me, I hope. Thomas, do you agree with me? Butter. butter. Always, always butter. Always, always butter. butter. Okay. okay, see? Right. Uh, we think alike. We like butter. Thomas, the butter you have, a person, that butter was unbelievable. There were like three different types of butter. Oh, yes. Salted oh, and, and that sweet. That was incredible. And, oh, yeah. yeah. Very beautiful. So it's just finished uh, folding this in like this. Yep. Can I do that? One. Yep. And then very... Um, here. Then you put the banana bread into the pan. Oh, my God. You were supposed to make your own over there. Oops. That's... To, I, I was keeping him next to me. Yeah. I, I'm not going to let that's him... That's a nice way of saying, I saw him starting to prepare this one. I thought, no, I can't let him on his no, own. No, no, that's not, that's not what I mean. I don't want you standing all the way over there. Aww. When I'm with Hugh Jackman, I want to be right next to Thank you. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> OK, so that, that goes... Folded. Yep, so just push that in. And you don't have to overbeat it. So that's why I took it off the machine, too. I don't like to overbeat yes. batter. Particularly banana bread. Do you like okay. you know, banana that? Banana bread. Banana bread, yeah. Now, I'm going to Australia in a, in a couple of weeks. Oh, really? I'm going to Sydney to a conference. Um, oh, fantastic. What should I not miss in Sydney? Okay. Oh, well, it is the most beautiful time I've of year I've been there. I've been there, but I want, I, there must be something Are you new. a morning person? Oh, yes. Oh, good. Okay, yes. so there's a Bondi to Bronte walk. That's uh, Bondi Beach to Bronte, okay. and they have this incredible walking path. Good on you, yeah. Uh, oh, I yes? And how, how long is the walk? Mm. Um, 
It would be probably 15, 20 minutes. That's all? I want a long walk. But that, I yeah, can well, you can longer. go there. Maybe it's okay. a half an hour, but it's beautiful, right on the headland. Okay. okay. And when you arrive there, you can go to Swell for breakfast. Or if you're What's really that? up for it, you What's can go. That? It's a really great sort of little cafe. Or Swill? Swell. Oh, swell. Think, think the ocean. <laughs> or bills. bills. Remember bills for breakfast. Okay, that, write this down, oh. everybody. I want to know. Yes, particularly okay. if you like butter. That is so, going to be... Now this goes, do you want me to do some washing up while no, you start Yeah, there? yeah, right. Come okay. over here. Come here. <laughs> this is at a 350 degree oven for one hour and ten minutes. Right. This is what comes oh, out of the oven. Yes. Now, wouldn't you like it filled? Yes. See, have you ever had it filled? Never. Okay, so you cut the bread in, in half, lean, yep. uh, crosswise, yep. like this with a serrated knife, mm. and then you put right in here mm. this delicious cream cheese, okay? Cream cheese, sugar, and a little vanilla and salt. So spread that gently. Fantastic. Just pile it all on and you'll spread it with this. The whole thing? Yep. Plop, oh. plop, plop. Got it. Yes, and if you know anyone or you can get on a boat, there's, you can go on ferries, but... Sunset on the harbour, Sydney Harbour is spectacular. But for me, the greatest, if you can do it, if you're up for it, yeah, well, when you arrive, yeah. get off the plane, go straight to Bondi Beach and jump in the ocean. It is the I'm greatest. Jet, that you're going to do it? I'm doing it. Good. Absolutely. Seriously, I you'll am. feel a million bucks. I am doing that. Yeah. Okay, you there's your that. bread. Now let that Hang just on. sit for a little bit. I'll give you a, oh, I'll give you a piece. I want you to. Oh. Now do you like the ends? I don't like the ends. Let me get your coffee. You know, I, I love the ends. Oh, you do? Yeah. Okay. I'll yeah. Give no, I like a little bit of crunch. Okay, I'll give you the end. Yeah. Oh. There's your coffee. This uh, filling is so. It makes it. It oh, makes it really yes. luscious. Oh yes. That's not. That's not the end. Here, this is the end. Oh okay. That's Thanks. for you. Thank you. Thank you. That's for you. Lovely. And, and look at that. Your... How quick was that? Huh? French toast can be a little challenging to make if you're serving more than a few people. That's why we came up with the idea of transforming my favorite French toast recipe into one I call oven-baked French toast. Now I can make 12 slices at a time, and you can too. Let me show you. We love to make French toast with flavorful bread, a wonderful hollow bread. You can use a French brioche like this. The French call French toast pan perdu lost bread because it's a way of reviving bread. And French bread, you know, becomes dry after a day sitting on your counter and you have to do something with it, make it into breadcrumbs or French toast. But the brioche, I'm using a fresh loaf. It can be a day old loaf too. And I'm going to use the end slice because we have hungry people and I don't even like to waste the end. I would cut the crust off just from the end and cut the bread into half inch slices maybe a little thicker than a half an inch. Using a serrated knife like this makes the slicing very easy. You can use store-bought white thick sliced bread. Um, if you're on a diet, you can use thin sliced bread, but don't up the slices that you consume. So there, we have just the right number of slices. Hey dogs, are you waiting for your French toast? They haven't had breakfast yet and they're going to get hungry. So six eggs, six large eggs in a big bowl for one loaf or 12 slices of bread. And these are farm fresh eggs. I just collected them from the hen house and they are so beautiful. Really hard shelled and gorgeous yellow yolks. Six. And break those up with a whisk or with a fork one and a quarter cups of whole milk. You can use heavy cream if you want. You can use half and half. Mom used to use whatever was in the kitchen. So one and a quarter cups of milk. And very important, the flavoring. A big pinch of salt. I use kosher salt. One tablespoon of sanding sugar. I'm using sanding sugar because it's a little bit sparkly and a little bit larger grain than regular granulated sugar, but you can use regular sugar. And two and a half tablespoons, this is kind of important, the orange flavored liqueur. I'm sure in your liquor cupboard you have some orange flavored liqueur. So two and a half tablespoons. And the zest of a nice bright skinned orange. I find this is the easiest way to zest an orange or a lemon. If you don't have an orange, you could use lemon, 
but the orange just adds such a great flavor with the orange liqueur. Approximately one and a half teaspoons of orange zest. And uh, cut the orange in half and just squeeze about two tablespoons of orange juice right into your mixture. Again, it just adds a flavorful deliciousness to the mixture. Now, I have two baking sheets lined with a non-stick pad. The oven is preheated to 375 degrees, and um, these non-stick pads are very, very good for lack of cleanup. You're gonna have everything on the pad and it just comes right off. Uh, it also is non-stick. You could use parchment, but not in this recipe because we're gonna put these under the broiler and parchment would burn. And now, Soak your bread, but not too long. You want to just dip it one side, turn it over. Notice how I'm using the fresh slice of bread to keep the drips right here. It's just a little tip. Just lift it out. Don't leave it in too long because the bread tends to soak up a lot of this liquid. And just continue doing this until the liquid is used up and the bread is all soaked. Boy, does that look delicious. And uh, how nice that you're not frying anything. That's the beauty of this particular French toast recipe. Just letting the last slice soak everything. Now take this to a 375 degree preheated oven, put it on the middle rack, and I have two ovens here. I'm just putting one in the top and one in the bottom. 10 minutes. Look how nice and golden these look, but they need to get a little bit brown. So make sure that the oven is on broil at 480 degrees and watch it two to three minutes, done. This is really attractive looking, really delicious. Now, my brothers could eat, oh, about six pieces of this each. I could eat two. How about you? I suggest that you invite some friends over this weekend. Make a nice breakfast. Serve it hot out of the oven. It's best that way. and I would sprinkle with a little bit more sugar. Since we haven't fried this, and there's no grease and no calories from butter, you could even add a little tiny bit of butter on top, like that. Let it melt right into the hot toast. That should melt nicely. And then a little bit of syrup. This is a traditional um, bakery pound cake pan. And I have a dish of softened butter and a soft bristle brush. And I find that this really works very effectively to uh, get into the corners and the cracks of any cake pan. Okay, that one's done. Preheat your oven, by the way, to uh, 325. When you start uh, mixing up the cake, you want that oven very well heated. Now, flour. Oh, a tablespoon or so in the pan. This is just all-purpose flour. And shake it all over the whole pan. Now, to get out the excess, you don't want to leave any big puddles of flour in there, so shake it out like that. And that is what the pan should look like. Now, we're using cake flour for this cake. I prefer to find the cake flour that does not have any leavening in it. I want to measure sifted cake flour. So I'm sifting four cups. That's why you sift. Look at all those lumps. You don't want those in your cake. And now, put that in another bowl. Now we're going to measure the flour. So you just dip in. Use the back of a knife 
and cut. That's one cup of cake flour sifted. There's just no shortcuts. I mean, you cannot not sift. Four. Now we're going to add our baking powder. Again, fresh baking powder, and you can use a knife to measure, and this we're going to have four teaspoons. So it's four and four so far. Two, three, four. And one teaspoon of salt. Oops, we have it right here. And I use coarse salt, you can use fine salt, but I find the kosher salt works really well. Okay, so now sift this. So that's one, and then we're gonna sift again. And now the next step is creaming the butter. And we have in this recipe three sticks of butter that are at room temperature. And uh, we have to add two and three quarters cups of sugar. And your vanilla, two teaspoons of vanilla extract. I can add that right now to the butter and sugar. So the butter and sugar have become smoother, softer. The sugar granules have started to get soft, not so crunchy. What you are now, turn it on one and start adding your eggs one at a time. We want eight eggs, eight good eggs. And now we're going to add the flour slowly with the cup of milk. And we don't want to overbeat. So we're going to do this rather quickly. And these powerful mixers enable you to do this kind of mixing very quickly. At one point, my daughter and I, we were baking a lot together. We decided we would use no machines. <laughs> I get kind of tired mixing this by hand, but our grandmas didn't have machines. There, done. Okay, so now release your bowl and proceed with the filling of the cake pans. This cake actually does crack down the center, which looks pretty. And we don't mind the crack in a pound cake as we mind the crack in a cheesecake. So just gently spread the batter so that it gets down into the corners. Looks good. So that'll be ready. And now this one is going to get the zest. So these are Meyer lemons, very fragrant. And if you have a grate grater like this, it simplifies the whole process so well. You just move the grater like this, and I'll do it right over the bowl, taking just the yellow rind off the lemon. Don't go down and take too much of that white pith. That's not what really has all the flavor. Now see that? See how beautiful and yellow it is? Goes nicely with the batter. And again, stir that in and pour this into your pan. And this, with the lemon inside, can also be glazed with a simple confectioner sugar and lemon juice glaze. That'd be pretty. Okay, and now these go right into the oven at 325, for approximately one and a half hours. And I am going to set my timer and check. Now here are two of the pound cakes. This one has the Meyer lemon in it, and this is the plain one. This has been out of the oven for 10 minutes. Just go around the entire cake with an offset spatula like this. And uh, we can now turn this over. So I'm going to slide this right onto a rack and I'll show you how easily it comes out. Look how beautiful that is. Uh, you can gently turn it over. And the beauty of a well-made pound cake, it doesn't fall apart. It is very, very nicely shaped. Now the glaze is made out of lemon rind. This is a Meyer lemon and again, we want the zest from one lemon, two and three quarters cups of confectioner sugar, and a quarter of a cup of Meyer lemon juice. So here's your zest. And just cut that lemon in half and squeeze it. Oh, the fragrance is amazing. Oh. 
Meyer lemons tend to have a lot of seeds, so they're not a great candidate for candying the lemon slices. Okay, so that goes into our bowl. And two, almost three cups of confectioner's sugar. Use a whisk. Now this is looking almost thick enough, so I'm gonna add maybe a half a cup more. Mm, looks very good. And now you can just pour a little bit of this onto the top of your cake while it's still warm. Let's begin with the streusel topping, which of course is very important on any coffee cake. In a medium bowl, mix together one and three quarters cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of coarse salt, and three quarters of a cup of light brown sugar, densely packed. Make sure there are no lumps. Mix this all together and cut in one and a half sticks of unsalted icy cold butter cut into small cubes and cut that in as if you were making a pastry dough. You want the streusel to form nice big fat lumps. So you see as the butter softens it kind of melts the sugar a little bit and even the color changes for the streusel. If you have a warm kitchen get the streusel right into a refrigerator to keep it cold. So now the lemons, how do we prepare them? We were using five lemons, we've cut off the stem end and the tip end, and you just put them into simmering water. We're going to boil any of the bitterness out of the lemons. And they're sliced into, oh, maybe 10 or 12 slices each. Do this once, remove to a parchment lined baking sheet, change the water, and then simmer them again. So in a large bowl, this is the batter for our coffee cake two cups of all-purpose flour, one teaspoon of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda, and one and a half teaspoons of salt. Whisk that together, and you should have by now, while your lemons were poaching and becoming more mellow, buttered very generously a tube pan like this, which is like an angel food cake pan with a removable center. And now to mix the rest of the batter. Cream one stick of butter, and that should be pretty much at room temperature so it's nice and soft, and one cup of granulated sugar. This is a very nice, simple sour cream coffee cake batter. Cream that. We have three tablespoons of Meyer lemon zest, grated from about four or five Meyer lemons. And add that right into your sugar and butter. And you can add two eggs, one at a time. And one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And then add your sour cream. We have one cup of good quality sour cream. And add flour, sour cream. flour, and with sour cream. And don't beat it too much, just enough to make sure everything is incorporated. Now spoon half the batter into the bottom of your tube pan, and now put lemons all the way around on top of the batter. You really want to cut through a layer of gorgeous flavor. There. Very good. And another layer of batter. So now the next layer of lemons. Hmm, lovely. And now streusel. And you can do this with your hands if you like. Get that right into your 350 degree preheated oven. Bake for about 55 minutes until the cake is golden brown. And when you insert a toothpick or a cake tester into the center, it comes out clean. So cool the cake in the pan for 
10 or 12 minutes, release it onto a rack and let it cool completely. And just before serving, sift one cup of confectioner's sugar and mix in three to four tablespoons of Meyer lemon juice. You want a nice opaque white glaze. And that looks good. No lumps. And with a spoon, just drizzle back and forth over the cake. I'm going to show you how to make a lovely cinnamon sugar bun. And uh, the sugar is just flavored with cinnamon. Use one cup of sugar and lots of cinnamon. You can grind your own if you happen to have some uh, beautiful cinnamon bark, or you can just use one and a half teaspoons of cinnamon from the spice market. Stir this up and, oh, add about a quarter of a teaspoon of fine salt. Stir this up and this will be your flavoring. So that's your cinnamon mixture. We have buttered muffin tins. These are the regular size muffin tins, well buttered. And our dough has risen. Uncover it. it. Smells so good when you uncover it. I use a substantial amount of bench flour. And here's that same beautiful dough. Process is pretty much the same. Dough is soft, work quickly. No nuts, nothing, just cinnamon and sugar. So this is about 18 inches by 10 inches. One way you can do it is by stretching. It's a little stretchy. And we'll even it out as we go along. So here you have softened butter. Spread about two tablespoons of butter. Room temperature with a soft pastry brush all over the surface. You're going to roll it exactly the same way. And use about a third of this mixture. Sprinkle all over. Again, roll up from the long side. And we're going to make 12 buns. Very easy. I'm trying to get it into a little bit of flour so that it doesn't stick. Now the same thing, just cut in the middle, the middle again, and into thirds. Put it right into the muffin tin. This dough will sit in a warm place until it's doubled in size. Pinch the little loose end if you think it's going to any chance to unfurl, just pinch it and see how I'm pressing them down. Okay, so again, cover this with clear wrap and let rise. The sticky buns are rising very, very nicely. Now look, these have more than doubled in size and these have doubled in size. They're ready to go into the oven now at 350 degrees and uh, uncover them, of course. Bake the sticky buns for 35 to 40 minutes. The sugar buns will bake for 22 to 24 minutes. So the sticky buns have been turned out. You have to turn them out uh, while they're still very warm. Otherwise, everything will stick in the bottom of the pan. But look how glistening and beautiful the sticky buns are. Let them cool now on a rack and then place them on your serving tray. They'll be gone in a matter of minutes. The sugar buns, the cinnamon sugar buns, uh, take out of the pan, see how easily they come out? And now brush with melted butter on the tops and dip in the remaining cinnamon and sugar. We're gonna start with the dry ingredients. Two and a half cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of baking powder. I'm gonna sift right here in this bowl. And 
one teaspoon of baking soda. And at this time, you can add your nutmeg, freshly grated nutmeg. And we need one teaspoon. So much better to grate your own nutmeg. It's one of those fantastic spices that really adds a depth of flavor to anything that it's used in. And nutmeg is really two spices in one. It's covered with a little orange web when you find it. That's mace. And you take the mace off and grind that. And you then are left with the nutmeg itself and you grind that. So here we have very flavorful nutmeg. And to this, add one and three quarters cups of rolled oats. Don't use instant oats, it's the rolled oats that you want. These will hold their shape and taste crunchy in the final muffin. Stir these in and then add one cup of dark brown sugar. Dark brown sugar dries out really fast, so use it immediately. To reconstitute brown sugars, light or dark, you can put, them in, put the sugar in a plastic bag and put like a half of an apple in the bag. The moisture from the apple will actually re-moisturize the brown sugar. It works like magic. So there, we have this done. And now add one cup of plump raisins. I love these golden raisins. The reason I'm using them today is because look at the size, look at the color, and they're moist. If the raisins you have are dry, you can mix them with a little bit of boiling water to plump them up. You could even use orange juice, which I prefer. So there. We have to grate the carrots. We need three cups of grated carrot. Peel your carrot first and then grate. And I think we have three cups here. Yes. We need two eggs, two-thirds cup of skim milk, and this you can just add to your eggs six tablespoons of really good olive oil. Instead of butter, in the batter, olive oil. Olive oil keeps these muffins really moist and very flavorful. So six tablespoons olive oil. So now add your carrot. If you don't have carrot, you could add zucchini. So now add bananas. Bananas are really nice in a muffin like this and kids love them. Now notice I'm using freckled bananas. Don't use bananas that are totally black. They are fermented and they will taste fermented in your muffin. A lot of people think that you have to have them black to be ripe. So you can squish them with an old fashioned potato masher like this. Or you can use a fork. And you want some lumps. Don't get it totally lumpless. Very tasty. So mix this up and then add your wet ingredients. And here you go. And stir this up with either a wooden spoon or a rubber scraper. So keep stirring, keep mixing until it's all incorporated. Okay, so this is nicely mixed. Time to fill the muffin papers. Now this is another way to bake muffins without a muffin tin. I love these papers. They're really charming and they look very professional when you serve the muffins in a container like this. I'm using a half cup ice cream scoop so that I don't make a mess. So fill each one with a half a cup first and then you'll go back and use up the rest of the batter. This recipe makes 10 of these. Now at this point, you should preheat your oven. It should be preheated already, by the way, at 400 degrees. And these muffins, because they're so hearty and have so many ingredients, will take about 25 minutes to bake. Now sprinkle a little bit of old-fashioned oats. This is a quarter cup, and I'll just sprinkle the tops. These will adhere to the batter nicely during baking and look pretty. OK, 400 degrees approximately 25 minutes. Set your timer. This is a very nice way to kickstart your day. Just peel off the paper and look what emerges. 
So now, first of all, is the dry ingredients, and we, we're going to sift with just a whisk. Okay. You don't need a strainer, but you could. You could put it through a strainer or a sieve if you want. So we have two cups of cake flour and one and a half cups of all-purpose flour. And you can um, sift. you sift like this now with a whisk? I do. Yeah. I do. And uh, we need a quarter of a cup plus two tablespoons of sugar. And just dump that in. And a tablespoon plus two teaspoons of baking powder. Okay. And a teaspoon of salt. So I put half the dry ingredients into the food processor, just half. And then I put my butter into here. And it's icy cold. Keep that butter really cold because then it will, uh, it's more like making a, a pastry. And then just pulse until you get the butter cut into the right size. See how fast it is? Yes. So by the time it takes you to just, yeah, yeah you can pulse or whatever. And then, then you just put this right back. <laughs> I just found that this was so easy. And then you just stir okay, this all together. All. Isn't that great? It is. Now this, if you want, uh, and you're, you're getting ready for a big brunch tomorrow yes. morning, make this the night before, put it in the fridge. Mm -hmm. Don't add the, Wet ingredients. Okay. Okay, just do that just right before the, you're going to roll them out. That's the, the tip for me, for, for you guys. Excellent. And now we have one cup of heavy cream and one egg plus one egg yolk. And put that into your heavy cream. Okay. Now you could, if you want, change the heavy cream to buttermilk. And they'll be more like buttermilk scones. So now just pour this into your dry ingredients and lightly incorporate. And that is your dough. See how easy? You can make dozens and dozens of these and they freeze extremely well. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Okay, so I'll take mine over here. You can take yours to the next board. Okay. And you can turn this out onto your board. And you can flour the board a little bit if you want. It looks like it's not gonna hold together, but it will. Yeah, that's good. Are you um, a caterer? No, but I'm interested in becoming one. Okay. They're, Love to cook. It's a fun business. It's very hard. Right. Okay. But any advice for someone starting out? Be prepared to work very hard. Okay. And have a couple really good people working with you. Oh, by the way, here's our golden raisins, our orange peel, our Grand Marnier, mm. and some orange zest. And you just Yum. pour this on. Okay. And spread it over. Fold this up. This is incorporating it into your dough. They're rushing me. Don't rush me. Are we going to be able to finish? Just oh, finish. roll that in and roll it again and then fold it again. This makes it. Um, I don't think mine's as pretty as yours. It doesn't, it's pretty at this point does not matter. Okay, good. <laughs> good. At all. <laughs> In fact, there's no I way, think it's gonna be. no way that this is going to be pretty. Okay, good. Okay, so there, fold that up and roll it out to about a quarter, an inch and a quarter of thickness, and then cut it with your ba your pastry cutter. Egg wash it with a, just the white of an egg. Okay. And sprinkle with sugar. So. I think How you, you should doing? Call You're doing fine. Speedy scones. You call them what? Speedy scones. Yeah, these are speedy. They, Forgot to give us some time to actually <laughs> bake here. It's okay. <laughs> well, here I got one one cut out. So put them on there, brush it with the egg white, and sprinkle with some. You can use sanding sugar, just like that. Bake um, at um, I, I can't remember the number. Is it what 400? Oh, 350 degrees for about 25 minutes, and this is what they're going to look like. Mm. They're really delicious. <laughs> Let's make these fantastic Great. pancakes, Let's which I, I had one earlier. How were they? Delish. Good. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so. So we're gonna put our dry ingredients um, oh, through so, a sifter. Okay, so okay, all, flour. it's not in there, right? No, nope. flour. Okay, four cups of flour. Right, yep. Don't write this down, it's on the website. And it's, and it's in, in the, the book. book. Okay. Great. One teaspoon of salt. Right, three quarters cup of sugar. And one tablespoon of baking powder. Yep, and okay. one teaspoon. Perfect. Oh, plus one teaspoon. You want to sift that? Okay. Great. While you're doing that, can I start Ooh, this part? Yes. Okay, good. We have, um, we have six egg yolks. 
So the bakery have, is 11 years old? It's going on 11 years. Mm. Yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. Should I keep um, whipping the egg whites? Um, sure, bit? you can. I'm going to mix the yolks with the milk. Um, I brought my own eggs in for you. No wonder they're whipping up so beautifully. Um, yes. We're going to do a teaspoon of vanilla. Perfect. And some melted butter, three quarters of a cup. Mm, one and a half sticks? Yep, exactly. Oh, and the Great. nice egg whites. Not too, not too hard, right? Not you can go hard. a little more, a little more? actually, okay. yeah. Okay. They don't have to be too soft. Medium to stiff peaks is perfect. Okay. Um, and this, this part of the recipe is pretty simple. Um, I'm going to do um, the egg and milk mixture okay. and vanilla. Into the flour. Right into the flour. And I'll show you a couple of tricks. One of the things we don't really want to mix this too much. So what I like to do is just go around the edge, and then I like to kind of spin the bowl a little bit, and I kind of want to like chop it a little bit with the whisk because I really don't want to mix it too much. I want lumps in it, yet mm. I want the flour dissolved. Okay. Okay? That's it. And um, then we're going to do the whites in two stages. Okay. Okay? So we're good like that. Why don't you add half of the whites to this? Okay. And I'm going to keep the whisk. I'm oh. not going to go to the spatula yet. Okay. Okay? That's great. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the bowl again and just kind of lift it up from the bottom. We don't want to hurt the whites too so much. So how many eggs do you use a day? We, we, how many eggs a day? About six cases, 30 dozen eggs in a, in a case? case. Yeah. Times six, a 180 lot. dozen times... 12. How much is 180 times 12? That's a thousand eggs a day at least. <gasps> yeah, we, ser we serve that. about 600 orders of pancakes a week. It's it's a little it's a little nuts. So it's 1800 if it were 10. So it's then it's 120, 100, 240. It's uh, 2040. That's oh a lot my of God. eggs. That's yes. a lot of See, eggs. I love to think that. <laughs> I'm probably wrong. Okay. Somebody checking that on your little handheld computer, little calculator. All right, Martha, now the rest the rest of the whites, just delicate. And um, fold it in. Perfect. Mm. Good. So fabulous. So lightweight. And that's the secret of our yes. of our pancakes. Okay, we mm. like to just fold the now, whites in. Have you used and this then... before? This all clad griddle. It's pretty amazing. If you don't have a griddle at home, you know, and a lot of stoves don't have griddles, this is a newfangled contraption from all clad, and I really love this. It's heavyweight, and yep. the griddle is and really, really set nice. Set it at what? Three sixty. I, I set it at three seventy five. Oh, I want them to kind of. Okay. Um, Get a nice and crust on nice that. It's accurate and even. Absolutely. Okay. Now, okay. okay, so that goes on a little butter on here? Absolutely. And okay. I like to use it on the stick okay. and keep the paper on it. But okay. you want to really get a nice amount of butter because when we go on the griddle, yeah. we want to create a ring, that crispy ring around the pancake. Yes, definitely. And some people like a ladle. I like a spoon. And the reason I like a spoon is because when you go on the griddle, you can go right up and then oh, yeah. make a perfect circle without perfect. having to play around with it. Um, can you I want to do one? Blueberry, please. Sure. Okay. Here, I'll, I'll add the fruit. Okay. Now, how many? I like a lot of blueberries. Okay, me too. But not too much. So you don't put the blueberries in the batter. <laughs> I don't put the blueberries in the batter because they'll, they'll bleed, and we don't want that to happen. Oh, okay. Okay, and then I'm going to do two more, and we'll do that for um, banana walnut. How's I, that? I don't like banana walnut. You don't? Make, let's make them all blueberry then. No. We have, to make the, we have to do that for the people who do like banana you got it. walnut. And we serve both flavors oh, yeah. at the bakery. Which is the most popular? Blueberry, definitely. I'm sure. Definitely. Like, why would you cook bananas? <laughs> We'll caramelize them a little bit. I'm just kidding. I, I just, I just <laughs> you have, have a this, thing about bananas. I do. I like them raw. Okay, so walnuts. Yum. Whole Look halves good. of walnuts? Yeah, Pete, nice big wow. chunks. Wow. I don't like anything minced too fine. Great. Pretty so, um, fancy. While they're cooking, yes. I just wanted to say that my wife wrote an amazing book, and not only are the recipes tested for like the home cooks and regular people, but the stories behind them are really funny. It's about the restaurant and how it evolved over the, all these years. We started out as a little coffee shop, and then started. So you have two restaurants now, one we up on two. 112th and Broadway too, That's which right. is called Community Food and Juice. And why wasn't it there when I was at Barnard College? I wasn't. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I wasn't, wasn't ready there. for you yet. <laughs> I wasn't ready for you yet. Oh. Okay, so oh. Martha, we're okay. ready almost right here. You see the way the bubbles yes. come? Okay, yes. you see that ring around them yes. right there? Yes. That's beautiful. So let's flip. Perfect. Oh, they're so beautiful. Yeah, they're nice. Okay. Okay. And then. And you see the egg whites okay. still in there? They're so kind of. Let, really... get, let them get crunchy. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Let that. Okay, gorgeous. You want to try one? And then what? Just okay. tell what this is. The okay. syrup. This is, a, this is a maple butter, okay? Um, is this blueberry? Yes. Yeah, that's blueberry. Mm. 
Um, so this is our maple syrup. It's pure maple syrup. And what we're gonna do, like a French butter sauce, Martha, when you do um, like a beurre blanc, and you whip it in, so you get an emulsification here. We're making this maple butter. Mm. You're starting without me? I am. Okay. I cannot. <laughs> I didn't have to stand in line, thank goodness. It's cold outside. But you know, right after the show, ladies and gentlemen, just wander down to Clinton Street, right? Absolutely. Uh, mm. We're open um, to 11 o'clock, and we even mm. serve our pancakes at night. Great recipe, great book.